Hey guys, Hannah Cox here, and you're watching my show, Histrionics. It's good to be back with you. I missed you last week while I was at the border, but I will have some really exciting content coming to you soon. I actually am going to bring some of the people that I got the privilege to speak to and meet down there onto my platform and interview them so that you can get it straight from the horse's mouth and see what's really going on down the border like I got to. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's get back to histrionics, where every week I'm talking about women's issues from a centrist point of view. I'm a libertarian. I don't consider myself left or right. And I hate the culture war in general. But increasingly, avoiding the culture war as a political pundit has become all but impossible. And everywhere I look, it seems that there are either people on the far left who are trying to erase my identity as a woman altogether, or people on the far right who think that I should be in a kitchen with no rights and no bank account on the far right. Personally, I think both of those extremes are awful for this country, awful for capitalism, and awful for society. So I'm hoping this show can try to bring people who feel like me together. Now that being said, there was a lot of melting down in my comments over the last episode I made before I went to Texas titled Death to the Pick Me Girls. And don't worry, thanks to popular demand, I am adding a comment section at the end of each episode where I will bring you some of my favorite butt hurt people from the comments. I don't know why so many men were triggered by the topic of pick me girls, but boy were they. Anyways, while that episode is still gaining steam and lots of outrage, I decided that I would come back and up the ante. This week I'm tackling the big one, which is that more and more women don't want to have kids and it is making a lot of people furious. So this week I bring you, I'm not having kids, so sue me. No, in all seriousness, I think that there are so many interesting facets to the outrage against people who don't want to have kids, and there are a lot of political tie-ins, so I'm excited to break them down today. As you might have guessed from my title, I don't want kids. And I have known that I did not want to have kids since I was six years old. And that's because even as a child, I did not like other children. I did not like doing children things. I wanted to be excluded or be in charge of the other children, but I never wanted to actually like chill with kids. I'm the oldest of three siblings who I adore. They are my best friends. They mean more to me than anything in the world. I actually have a tattoo with each of their initials on it. Like I adore them. But because I'm the eldest in a large family and probably because I was homeschooled, I feel like I already did a good bit of child rearing in my day. Now, I have Christian conservative parents. My dad is a Southern Baptist minister, and I have to give them such a shout out here because when I started saying I didn't want to have kids at six, they always supported me. They have never, ever, ever once in their lifetimes put any pressure on me to get married or have kids. In fact, they've actively advocated against it when I've been dating somebody who's beneath me or when it would mean up giving opportunities for my own life. And I am so, so thankful that I had parents like that. Because it turns out a good portion of society is not so live and let live in their mentality, especially when it comes to women and their reproductive choices. I remember when I first started saying I didn't want to have kids as a kid and adults constantly being condescending towards me and telling me, you'll change your mind, sweetie, just you wait. Which even as a kid, I found extremely patronizing. But sure enough, as I aged, I only became more and more entrenched in my beliefs that I did not want to have kids. And honestly, it hasn't always been an easy position to take. It can feel quite isolating, especially once you get into your 20s and 30s and a lot of people around you start having kids. You simply don't have as much in common with many friends that you used to when your life split in that kind of way. It also limits the potential partners you have because a lot of men, I would say most men, do want to have kids. I meet a lot more men, actually, who want to have kids than I meet women, which I'll talk about later in this episode. So right then and there, you have a smaller pool of people that you can pick from to date. I personally don't really think it's ever polite to ask somebody why they don't have kids. It's a very personal decision to many people. And honestly, beneath the surface, there's often a lot of pain for people. Many people do want to have kids and simply are unable to physically. Other people are desperate to have kids but have not found a suitable partner to procreate with. Some people have had kids die. And others, like me, simply don't want to get bullied. Now, I've always been very upfront about it because anytime I see women getting bullied over anything, it empowers me to speak out on their behalf because I'm not scared of bullies. And I think the more that we talk about these things, the more it normalizes it and takes the heat off people who are not as solid or confident in their decisions. So with that being said, I will tell you why I don't want kids to kick this off. One, as mentioned, I don't particularly like kids. I like some kids, but I don't enjoy being around children 24-7. It really stresses me out. I don't like messy rooms. I like things to be very neat and tidy and quiet. 
I also simply have other priorities that I've always wanted to accomplish, things that bring meaning and purpose to my life. And I don't think that that's compatible with having kids. For some people it is, and that's great. Personally, I think though, if you're going to have kids, you need to be all in. They should be your first priority. I personally just don't think that I could parent at the level that I would want to and that I think should be the standard while also working at the level that I do. With the way my work is structured, there will always be a lot of things that came before kids and that's simply not fair. Having a parent that's on the road all the time, having a parent in the public eye, which as a pastor's kid, I very much grew up with, is not always a great environment for a kid. Furthermore, I have a generalized anxiety disorder. I'm not just saying I have anxiety. I have been diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder. Now, thanks to cognitive behavioral therapy, I have made substantial progress. I've been able to live without medication and most days I'm great. But I still think that having this disorder would make child rearing especially difficult for me. Anybody who's ever been around me knows how possessive and protective and territorial I am over my dog. I live with constant anxiety that something will happen to him. I really cannot imagine amplifying that with a child. Like, I think I'd be in the fetal position most days. I'd just be like watching their location on my phone, calling every 15 minutes, where are you? If somebody bully, if somebody bullied my kid, I'd, I'd be in jail. Furthermore, because I have an anxiety disorder, there's a very high likelihood that I would pass that on to a kid. Nature over nurture is debatable here, but it definitely runs in my family. And most substantially, I simply don't think the world is that great of a place. I'm not a nihilist here. I'm not trying to be all dark and depressing. And obviously, I do still have hope that the world can get better. I spend every day fighting to that end. But as is, I don't really know that I want to bring something that I would love more than anything into this world that is pretty quickly falling apart. Like, they can't even consent to that. We live in very uncertain times. I couldn't even say what a future would look like for a kid I would have right now in 20 years. That's unsettling. And I also have other people in my life that I would rather take care of and pour into that are already here. You have finite resources as a person. I could not be the sister and daughter and friend that I want to be if I had kids. And then there's the less substantial things, but they do still matter simply being around my preferences. I like being spontaneous. I like moving around. I like traveling. I like having career freedom and the ability to quit a job if I need to because nobody else is depending on me. I don't have to choose a partner based on my biological clock. And I also do not want to go to the zoo or amusement parks, or aquariums, or any of the places kids love to go. I hate those places. But honestly, saying I don't want them should be enough. It's really nobody else's business. It doesn't impact you. But alas, as you will see in this episode, that is not the posture most people have when it comes to this topic. I want to say this loud and clear because I already know it's going to need to be said ad nauseum. Anytime, absolutely anytime you say you don't want kids, it immediately hurts the feelings of people who have kids. I don't know why, I don't get it, but they almost always feel insulted, look down upon, like you're mocking them. I'm not. You want to have kids? I hope it works out for you. I, I wish you the best. I support you. I mean, I don't know what you want from me. Like, do I want your lifestyle? No, I don't. But you don't want mine either. So I don't know why it's so bothering just to say, I don't want kids. Nobody's coming for you. Nobody's demeaning parents. Nobody is criticizing you. Love to you all. It's just not what I want. Uh, the people that I don't have love for are the people who are overtly critical and melting down over the fact that many women don't want to have kids. And that's what this episode is geared at. Now, when I first started saying publicly that I didn't want to have kids, I don't know that I was expecting the weeping and gnashing of teeth. I was certainly expecting the condescension and the you'll change your mind kind of stuff. But man, the age of the internet has just brought some weird people out of the woodwork. What I think is the most interesting in observing this conversation and debate that has taken place across all of my platforms and many comment sections for about a decade now is that the people who are child free by choice seem to have spent a lot more time thinking about that decision and all it entails than the people who have kids. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not just knee jerk saying that. I'm saying that the breadth of conversation I see happening in child free circles as compared to those I see from people who want to have kids, it's just on a different level. Once people have kids, they do tend to start thinking about this more deeply, but by then they're in. Things like, will you and your partner parent the same way? Do you have the same values, the same styles of parenting? Things like discussing who's going to do the brunt of the work, who's going to pick up the kid when they're sick, who's going to be the one to leave work, who's going to be the one to quit their jobs and stay home with the kid when daycare is $20,000 a year. 
Things like, what does this mean for your career, your ability to move around and move up? Are you willing to keep moving and take your kids in and out of school? Or are you going to be living in the same place for the next 18 years? Again, I'm not saying this to criticize people. I'm saying it because I hope people will start thinking about this a bit more deeply. Because one of the things that I think is the saddest is I get a lot of DMs from moms who regret their choices. Now, I want to be clear. I've never had someone say, I don't want my kids. That's not what they say. They say, I love my children. I wouldn't trade them for the world. But if I had to go back and do it all over again, I would do what you're doing. I never got to pursue my own passions. I never got to figure out who I am. My life has never been about me. I feel like I missed out on getting to plot my own path. That makes me very, very sad for those women. And then you have other women on TikTok who will just flat out say that they do regret having kids and they wish they had not done it. I'm going to say something that will make some people upset. I think we need to normalize regretting having your children. I'm a therapist and I work with kids, teens, young adults, as well as parents. And there are so many parents who have been vulnerable enough with me in their therapy sessions to admit that they regret having their children. Now, before you shame those parents, these are really, really good parents. Now, these aren't all parents that I work with. It's just a emotion that does come up in therapy that I don't think really gets talked about because if they were to say some of these words out loud or to other people, they would get shamed for it. And don't get me wrong, these are amazing parents. They're great parents. They love their children. They would do anything for their children. They would never give their children up, but it's just talking about the emotion of regretting having them. And some of this is probably due to divorce or relationships falling apart. But I also just think a lot of people are sold a bag of goods when it comes to having kids and what that will look like. And it doesn't always measure up. Now, I've talked about this on other videos on my channel. I encourage you to check them out. I recently did one on the cost of daycare as one example, but there are so many things that hit people after they become parents that are outside of their control, but have drastic, drastic implications on their life. I do wish they thought more about. And to be honest, I think one thing that helps those conversations are people like me and now many other women who are coming out and talking about their choice in the opposite direction and saying, I don't want to have kids and here's why. And that really is becoming so much more common these days. I know there are child-free women who have never wanted to be mothers, but what about the women who always thought they'd be mothers, were excited to become mothers, and then as they got older, they see that maybe it's not the right decision for them, okay? so. This is something that really resonates with me because my whole life I was creating a reality that would make it so that it was safe and wonderful to bring a child in. I've wanted to really find a partner that is super loving and can, you know, provide for us. And, you know, I create a life that even I work remotely. I was creating a reality that would best support you know, me being a mother. And it's something I always wanted and I was sure it was gonna happen. And now after doing a bunch of like soul searching and researching, I'm 95% sure I'm not going to have a, child, have a child. So how did I get from point A to point B? How did I get from being 100% sure I was gonna be a mother? It was like the driving force of my life to now I'm pretty sure I'm not having a baby ever. And motherhood is just not something I'm going to partake in in this life. So the first reason is I love my life. I don't think my life lacks anything. I'm literally in Capri um, traveling around the world with my husband who is my absolute best friend. I focus on my health, my wellness, my mental health. I'm, I'm in the best place I've ever been in my life. Like I feel very fulfilled and I'm just so excited about so much. Even when I go home, I am so excited to pick up new hobbies. I'm an artist. I love to paint. I never even knew I loved to paint. If I had had a baby, I don't know if I ever would have discovered I love to paint. I don't know if I would have ever really reached a point in my own healing journey that you know, I feel really mentally healthy every day. I don't have anxiety. I don't have depression. And that's something I really struggled with in my 20s. So that kind of goes into my second point. So another reason why I wanted to have children now that I look back and when I was in my 20s, I was so into being a mother because I honestly wanted to find that unconditional love. However, I found that within myself through my healing. I found that in a partnership through really working with it and putting energy into my relationship through couples therapy and, and really just like learning communication tools and like just being more mature, being in my 30s, he being in his 40s, you know, we created this amazing relationship and we're making so many memories together and I feel so full of love every single day when I wake up with him that I'm not lacking 
and looking for a place to give my love to or receive love from you know I'm not looking for that unconditional love like I found it so I think in my 20s I had this deep yearning for a child because I believed you know the only person I ever really received that unconditional love from was my own mother and I had a I have a great relationship with my mother you know so I'm not really lacking in this area of unconditional love. I've definitely experienced it in my life. I'm sure it's different. I know there are parents going to be watching and be like, it's different. You don't know what it feels like to have that. It's true. I don't. I don't. But I do know what, I'm, what unconditional love feels like. I might not know a mother-child relationship from that dynamic, but I do know it from my own, at, like from my own mother. So I know it's different, but... I'm okay with not knowing it. I'm okay with actually the amount of unconditional love I feel in my life. And the third reason, there's so many reasons, but the third reason I'm going to talk about in this video is basically I've seen a lot of my friends become mothers. I'm 33 years old, so I've witnessed it a lot and I've just seen how much they've changed, how much more worry they have in their life, how tired they are, how anxious they are. And I watched these girls come, go from being so playful and fun and just to being tired and I'm sure it's so worth it right but I just know that like I feel so well right now in myself and like every day I just feel better and better and I just see them really struggling and that's something I really want that if I remain child free that I want to be a part of all these women's villages I think that instead of all of us feeling so confused about having children if you're on the fence like get more involved in people's villages. These women need villages. They need more support. And instead of having your own child that will also need support, I would love to like band together and, you know, be able to support these women who are struggling. So that's something else I see as a benefit to not having my own child that I can actually help my friends and my sister-in-laws who might be struggling you know, with motherhood that I can actually be like, yeah, I can watch your kid for an hour or two. And it's not going to exhaust me. You know, I don't know if I could really be a mother full time, but I can definitely babysit or, you know, be there for my friends in the way that, um, you know, I think in the past other women were. And I think that has really changed in our society. I'm 53 years old and I don't have kids. This comes with every type of response you could imagine. But who's going to take care of you when you get old? That's what we're put on this earth for. You're so selfish. You don't know true joy until you have a child. What do you do with all your free time? Do you regret it now that you're older? The simple answer is no. A huge thank you goes out to this creator for shedding light on what it's like to grow up as an older woman, aging, and not having kids. I worry about what that'll be like for me someday because, yeah, do I wonder if I'll regret it? But would I rather regret having kids than not having them? I would rather regret not having them than regret having them. America and honestly everywhere, motherhood is treated as a woman's central purpose in life. As if our destiny is to let a tiny stranger rip a hole through our Pikachu from the inside out. <laughs> And then as soon as we turn 18, we're just supposed to sit back and wait for Nick Cannon to impregnate us. <laughs> and look, I have infinite respect for moms, but motherhood is hard. It's so hard, it even broke Marie Kondo. <laughs> Tidying up was her life's work. Then she has kids and was like, F it, living in squalor is fine. <laughs> shouldn't be surprising that some women aren't signing up. But many people aren't just surprised, they're horrified. Childless women are seen as unfulfilled, unhappy, even the Pope has slammed us, saying that not having children is selfish. First of all, I am not going to take procreation advice from a guy who's never even penetrated anyone. <laughs> Well, not that we know of, anyway. I love these videos. They're thought-provoking. They let you see how other people are looking at things. They present women with multiple ways life can look. And I think that's my main problem when it comes to all of this, is that being a wife and a mother is a beautiful, wonderful thing, especially if you have the skill set to be good at it. We need women who thrive in those roles, obviously. 
But the problem is when women get the message that that is the only pathway for them. When society tells them that they are somehow less than if they don't get married or don't have kids. And in response to the growing number of women who are coming out and saying, I am child free by choice, and some men too, by the way, there has been so much backlash, especially from conservative media. Hold a day in the life of a childless woman. The point is to make you feel good about being an aging, deeply unlikable woman who never had kids. Narcissism, it makes you happy. Feminists like Chelsea Handler, they've been lied to by their society forever. Yeah. That you could be a girl boss and you can do anything a man can do, which everyone who's ever seen a woman back up a vehicle knows that's not true. Your womb resembles a dried up tumbleweed blowing down an old western town and your- Women are more than their wombs. But okay, let's talk about why these men care so much about women not having kids that they decide to throw tantrums online about it. Is it because the pretty little patriarchal world that suited you so well is crumbling around you? Is it because more and more women finally feel empowered enough to choose what their future is going to look like, but you men haven't worked out how to do the same? Is it because you feel like you're losing control and the only way that your tiny little brain can figure out how to regain that control is to shame women back in their boxes? Well, guess what, sunshine? Generations of women fought so that we'd have the right to choose what we want to do with our lives. And your little tantrum ain't going to change shit. It's miserable. I mean, she is miserable and it's written all over her face. You know who's miserable? My mom who didn't want me. <laughs> so a woman shares her single child-free weekend plans on the internet and these single men lose their ever-loving mind. Here's what she said. It's 10.45 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm 29 and single and I don't have kids yet. Here's what your Saturday morning looks like when you're single at 29 and you don't have a kid running around the house. I didn't rise from my bed until 10.15. Every time I thought, I should probably get up and do something. I thought, why? Nobody's making me. I'm not missing out on anything. I went to Beyonce last night and I didn't get home until 1 a.m. And I danced and drank my little heart out. And I didn't pay a babysitter to watch my kids as I did that. Literally nothing problematic, nothing triggering that you would think right but here's what the men have to say about it this man says her life doesn't revolve around her family and kids so instead it revolves around tv shows and pop stars worst of all she's too stupid to realize how depressing that is depressing for who like what she's describing sounds lit like beyonce for the weekend sleeping in she goes on to talk about you know going to try this new dish that she wants to try and she's like i don't have any obligations society really has tried to make me feel guilty or make me feel like i'm behind in life because i'm not married yet and i don't have kids yet but i feel fulfilled that's all she was saying but you have men on the internet now uh threatening to off her because she's happy about her weekend plans. Like, this is the thing. Some of these men are so lonely that it has made them, like, so jaded and so miserable. The fact that you were threatened to do that because she's happy being single. These are the same kind of men that were trying to justify a young woman getting hit on the side of her head with a brick. Saying that you, you ladies say you're independent, right? Where's all that independence now? Like, you would wish physical harm on a woman because she's happily single? Some of these single men are miserable. They hate the fact that you seem happy without them. The fact that you would be okay with a woman getting hit on her head with a, with a brick because she refused to give a man her number? And you say, well, that's what you get for being single? A woman shares her weekend plans with you and you're like, for what? These same men have the nerve to act surprised that the birth rate is dropping and the marriage rate is dropping. Look at who's out here. I firmly believe that people who are happy and confident in their choices do not feel this strongly about other people's choices unless they are being personally impacted and harmed by them. That is never the case here. Their talking points are honestly so empty and tired, but I'm going to go through and quickly debunk them real fast. First and foremost, we have the, you will be alone with cats and miserable, mostly from the incel community that will be alone with cats and miserable. It's projection. I made another video on my platform a few weeks ago talking about how it's actually men that are very fast to move on when their wife dies or is even diagnosed. Often they move on before she dies. And within the context of that episode, I pointed out that it's actually men who are terrified to be old and alone. They are so terrified that they will run out and get a hospice wife as fast as they can the minute there's a sign of trouble. In contrast, women do the exact opposite. Women are far less likely to remarry after the death of a husband. And I think that's because they have better social support systems. I can't emphasize this enough to men. Women are not afraid of being alone. You are, and that's okay. But stop projecting and treat women really well if you want them to accompany you through your journey. Furthermore, this notion that you won't be alone when you're old if you have kids is 
not grounded in reality. So when you don't want children, one of the most common things people will say to you is that when you get old, you'll be alone. And I think a lot of people genuinely believe this. And I think part of the reason is that people don't realize how alone most old people are, even when they have children. The stats vary, but somewhere around 60% of nursing home residents don't have any visitors in a given year. And most of those people have children. One of the benefits of being child-free is that you can't default to the assumption that there will just be people who have to spend time with you as you get older. You're very aware that relationships and community are things you're going to have to actively develop over your life if you want to have them as you age. But the truth is that is also something that people with children need to be doing. They just often assume that they don't. And especially as we enter an era where we understand that family isn't just like entitled to have you in their lives no matter how they treat you or make you feel, it's going to be even less guaranteed that just because you have children means they're going to be a big part of your life as you age. We're all at a high risk of being alone as we age and it's not whether or not we have children. It's whether or not we treat people like shit. Most old people do not live in multi-generational households with their kids. They live by themselves or they live in nursing facilities. Then kids ain't taking care of you like that or if they are, it's from afar. They have jobs and kids of their own and you will not be their priority as they age in life. It is worth noting though that in old age, men are far more likely to live with a spouse than a woman is. My mom has a wealthy friend who is probably in her 60s, maybe maybe 70s. She's a beautiful woman and very successful. And my mom asked her why she wasn't dating recently. And she said, I don't want to be a purse and I don't want to be a nurse. And my mom said, and you don't want to be a hearse. And I think that's exactly right. Men are often looking for women to take care of them in old age and it doesn't flow both ways. But regardless, this idea that if you have kids, you're never going to be lonely, especially as you age, it's just ridiculous. Talk to any hospice nurse, talk to anybody who works in a nursing home facility. Every time I say I don't want kids, when people like guilt trip and say things like this, like, who's going to take care of you when you get older? Shut up. I always revert back to like stories like this and things that I've seen because as a nurse, in my opinion, the most loneliest people in the hospital are the people that have kids. And honestly, are you only having a child so that you have somebody to take care of you when you get older? So your children are your insurance plan? Like, I I'm, I'm just, I'm confused. It's okay for you to want to have kids for selfish reasons, and but it's not okay for me not to want to have kids for my selfish reasons. I mean, it never makes sense. My mom used to take us to nursing homes, I don't know, every six months or so to take cookies or Valentine's, various things, just to meet the old people and lend them some company. And it was one of the saddest institutions I've ever been to. The vast majority of those people were desperately alone and no one had visited them in quite some time. And yes, most of them had kids, especially because for that generation, you didn't have much choice. The next talking point child-free by choice people get is, you're going to regret it. And I often see these men, they're like, I know so many women who waited till it was too late and they regret it. They're 35. Sure, Jan. One 35-year-old um, woman can easily have kids. So I, I don't think that any 35-year-old is saying this to you. Like, please take a basic anatomy class before you try to write incel porn for the internet. Secondarily, even for women who are well past their reproductive years, I've yet to see a tear. This is a little bit of a tricky conversation to have. Um, and I try to show, like, as a child-free creator, I try to show up here really honestly, um, because I do think it's important to be honest. And obviously people say to child-free people quite a bit that we're gonna regret our decision. So this morning I thought that I would like do my journaling and would just be really honest with myself and kind of write down the reasons why I'm grateful that I don't have kids, but also the reasons why I regret not having them. Um, so I decided that I am going to share them with you. I think it's important to be honest. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Yeah, there is none. This is a fantasy men are telling themselves to make them feel better as women are increasingly opting out of marriage and childbirth with them. Not only do these women not regret their choices, studies actually show that they are amongst the happiest demographic in existence. Paul Dolan, a professor of behavioral science at the London School of Economics, said the latest evidence showed that the traditional markers used to measure success did not correlate with happiness, particularly marriage and raising children. We do have some good longitudinal data following the same people over time, but I am going to do a massive disservice to that science and just say, if you're a man, you should probably get married. If you're a woman, don't bother. Men benefited from marriage because they, quote, calm down, he said. You take less risk, you earn more money at work, and you live a little longer. She, on the other hand, has to put up with that and die sooner than if she were never married. The healthiest and happiest population subgroup are women who are never married or had children, he said. 
Dolan's latest book, Happy Ever After, cites evidence from the American Time Youth Survey, which compared levels of pleasure and misery in unmarried, married, divorced, separated, and widowed individuals. Other studies have measured some financial and health benefits in being married for both men and women on average, which Dolan said could be attributed to higher incomes and emotional support, allowing married people to take risk and seek medical help. However, Dolan said men showed more health benefits from time than not as they took fewer risks. Women's health was mostly unaffected by marriage, with middle-aged married women even being at higher risk of physical and mental conditions than their single counterparts. This is not rocket science, guys. I've been saying this for some time, and I think it continues to be one of the most pressing conversations we can have. Now that all things are equal, now that we actually have equality under the law, now that women are actually able to earn a paycheck and compete with men, we have to have a conversation about how men and women show up as good partners for one another in a relationship. Right now, despite being equal under the law, they are not showing up equally in relationships. Women are still doing the vast majority of labor, all of it, emotional, mental, physical, particularly when it comes to the household and child rearing. They are the ones that are more likely to quit their jobs, sacrificing years of their careers and stay home with the kids. They're the ones more likely to leave when a kid is sick and go pick them up. They're the one more likely to take them to practices and other events that they're involved in. Society still asks way more of women in these roles than it does men, and it's damaging to their health, which is another reason women are opting out. On top of that, men are still way more likely to cheat on women even after they've had kids, despite all the crazy talk from the red pill community. When they get divorced, women are often left destitute by those arrangements, particularly if they were stay-at-home moms. And modern dating is a trash can. Have you listened to women talk about their dating experiences online lately? Because it's a horror movie. So tell me, what would make women want to opt into this role unless they just have an instinct where they have a strong desire to have kids and nurture someone? Like, be so serious. This isn't a good offer for many people. Next up, we have the infamous, you're selfish. I'm a 30-year-old woman who does not have children. Gasp. I don't want children. I am so perfectly happy, I promise. The other day, I was at a photo shoot full of other women, mothers, unbeknownst to me. Love that for them. Really, no judgment, do you? We need you, in fact. But there was like a mean girl situation going on that I had never experienced before. They were all gathered amongst themselves, talking about how selfish our generation of women are who've decided to not have children, and how we don't have purpose, and how we will never experience love. They were going in, and I'm just sitting over there drinking my cup of whiskey, minding my own business, crickets, super awkward, because I knew that eventually, hopefully, they would have a little bit of social awareness and look over and be like, oh, there's another lady friend, and ask me about my non-existent children. They did. They were like, oh, how old are your kids? First of all, bold assumption. <laughs> I just said, no, mm-mm. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have any. <gasps> Are you kidding me? They went in so hard and I'm just sitting there like, yeah, no, I'm good. I really am good, you guys. I spent the last decade of my life traveling. I just spent three years living on a beach in Mexico. The things that I've done, I would not have been able to do had I had kids. Anyway, we wrap it up. I don't say anything. I don't really care, honestly. As I'm leaving, they said, call us if you ever decide to be a mom. <gasps> what? I can't call you now? Like, why do they group up like that? There's nothing wrong with being selfish. Nothing whatsoever. If you claim to not be selfish, I suspect you are a liar and a fraud. I don't believe you, and I don't trust you. All humans are selfish. You have a rational desire to pursue your own self-interest. That's not a bad thing. That's actually what keeps you alive. That's what makes capitalism work because you have to serve other people to get your own interests met. If you do not put yourself first, you're asking to be a victim. Nobody's honestly that altruistic. Now, many people will feign being that altruistic because it gets them social credit, but it's a lie. They're still selfish. They're still getting something out of that equation. Having kids or not having kids can both be selfish, by the way. In fact, I would say many people have kids for far more selfish reasons than people who don't have kids. You're having kids because you want to, or at the very least, because you believe it will fill some void or lack of purpose in your life. Now, obviously that isn't always true. And I actually think that's where a whole lot of the bitterness towards child-free people comes from. Stop trying to gaslight people into thinking you had kids for the planet. If you're so altruistic, why didn't you just adopt or foster? There's like 400,000 plus kids in foster care that need homes. Over 120,000 of them are looking to be adopted. If having kids is so unselfish, why is IVF a $39 billion industry? 
Like the fact you need your kids to look like you and have your DNA says to me, this is actually about you and not just about rearing children for the good of society. I'll refer to the goat when it comes to the question of selfishness, Ayn Rand. She said, to love is to value. Only a rationally selfish man, a man of self-esteem, is capable of love. Because he is the only man capable of holding firm, consistent, uncompromising, unbetrayed value. The man who does not value himself cannot value anything or anyone. You can make others happy when and if those others mean something to you selfishly. If you love them, then you want to make them happy. Fine. If you don't love them, that's not a moral crime. You don't have to love everybody. You cannot love everybody because it's a meaningless expression. You can love only those whom you value. And if they contribute to your happiness, you contribute to theirs. That's fine. But each one of you has to be selfish about it. Supposing somebody were in love with you and said, okay. I love you because you're so bad. So I sacrifice myself and I'm going to love you. Would you accept that or no, would you say it's the most... No, sir, I wouldn't either. That's the most insulting thing anyone could have said to you. And yet that's what altruism would demand. If you're not having kids based on your selfish, rational self-interest, then you're probably not going to be a good parent because you're probably not going to value them that much for long. To be frank, I'm really not concerned with selfishness as a whole unless it hurts people. So have kids or don't. It's probably a selfish decision to some degree either way. And it doesn't matter because you're not harming anyone. The kind of selfishness that actually is harmful, though, is when you have kids you can't take care of. Yeah, poor people shouldn't be having kids because it's a selfish thing to do to bring a child into poverty when poverty has been deemed a form of trauma. It's not classist. It's not even teetering on the line of eugenics. It's truly common sense and basic humanity. Why would you bring a child into poverty who's going to knowingly suffer because you don't have the access to all the resources needed to successfully raise them as a proper child? It is basic humanity and consideration to be so self-aware to know that if you cannot provide for yourself or the children you currently have, you should not be having more children. And you realize poverty is not an inherited genetic characteristic, right? So there's no way it's teetering on the line of eugenics. As someone who has worked in early childhood special education and general education in early childhood programs, elementary schools, and middle schools, I can confidently say it is such a tragedy to watch families continually have children who can't even provide for the ones they currently have. These families truly have no shame because they announce it like it's supposed to be this big celebration. I'm sorry, but in what world are we celebrating the tragedy of another child being born into poverty when these parents can't even provide for the children they currently have? And because they are having another child that they cannot provide for, all those children now are going to have more neglect because there's another child added that they have to be responsible for when they clearly can't even provide for the ones they already have. Like, am I speaking French to the Chinese army in Russia? Does no one understand what I'm saying? Like, be so for real. And there are far too many people out there procreating who should not be. Like, that's where the actual ire should be suggested. Not at people who are like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm not going to do it. It's at the people who are popping them out and then not taking care of them financially, physically, emotionally, mentally. And then society has to pick up that burden of the mess you created. There are so many downsides, both at an individual and societal level, of kids who are not properly cared for. Bad parents are responsible for the vast majority of crime, poverty, violence, drug abuse, mental health issues, men on Tinder. The list goes on. That's the only form of selfishness we should actually be concerned about and condemning. Next point, you're putting down people who have kids. Like, show me where. I have yet to see it. In any of these videos of women talking about being child-free, I have yet to see them in any way demeaning parents. What I see is people merely celebrating their lives as people who happen to be child-free and the things that go along with that, and it triggers people who have kids. Like, we are supposed to pay for your baby shower, come to your gender reveal, attend your kids' birthday parties, listen to you talk about them ad nauseum, like your constant stream of photos and videos you post of them online of every little monotonous moment they experience. And when is any of that ever returned to people who don't have kids? I'm just saying, I have bought a house on my own. I've started two businesses on my own. I've become quite successful. I've yet to have anybody throw me a shower, buy me presents, and I don't ask them to. So at the very least, what all those people who have kids who are getting all of those things poured into them could do is at the very least be supportive and happy for people in their lives who have made other choices. Instead, they melt down because they feel envy, not attacked, envy. You shouldn't need other people to make the same choices as you to feel confident in them. Somebody choosing to have a kid in no way undermines my lifestyle and choice not to. 
It doesn't make me feel bad about it. It doesn't make me envy them because I don't want to do that. I think it makes them feel angry towards us because like I said, a lot of people have kids without thinking about it and then they regret their choices. And I get it. It's hard. Again, I'm the oldest of four. I've seen firsthand. It is a hard lift to raise kids. I have all the sympathy in the world for mothers and fathers. So me acknowledging that it's a heavy lift and it's not something they personally want to take on is not an insult to you. They're not coming for you. All in all, I find this talking point to be mostly projection from women who haven't grappled with these realities before. Because again, a lot of women will fully tell you that they regret their decisions. And other women who are actually happy in their choices as mothers will celebrate people picking other pathways that are good for them, will acknowledge that it's very, very difficult to be a good mom, and will applaud somebody for taking the less popular road when they feel it's not the right fit for them. The other people that come for our throats, though, are the men, who I think are feeling very, very fearful of the fact that a growing number of women don't want to have kids when they very much do, and they very much need a woman to have kids. They're recognizing that they're not going to get the same deal that their ancestors did, and that terrifies them. As I mentioned earlier, men as a whole do tend to want kids, and we're seeing a real discrepancy between the genders on this question lately. Another day and another study that scares the living shit out of me. Here we go, Pew Research Center. Young men without children are more likely than young women to say they want to be parents someday. Now this is a study of 18 to 34 year olds in the US who have at least one living parent. 57% of men say that they want to have children, while only 45% of women want kids. 21% of women are sure they don't want to have kids, while 15% of men are sure they don't want to have kids. They're likely right. They're not going to get the same deal that their grandfathers did. And for good reason. Women didn't have actual rights. They didn't have autonomy. They were often forced into those relationships. They were treated like second-class citizens. And no man who wants a woman to have to go back to that landscape deserves to have a wife or kids. Do not give them to him. Let that bloodline die right on off. In many ways, men are going to have to really step up if they want women to opt in to marriage and motherhood with them. They're going to have to work to ensure that not only do they treat those roles as valuable and essential within their own home and within their own relationship, but that society also treats these roles with the respect they deserve. I know a lot of men, when they hear these conversations, will be like, well, I just don't want Western women. I just want to, I'll be a passport bro. Like, no, you won't because you're broke. You probably don't even have a passport. That's not a real thing. Secondarily, that's not a threat to Western women. They don't want men who are not coming to the table looking for ways to better our partnerships together. And the women in third world countries don't want you either. They're just looking for a green card and they will leave you exactly like you deserve as soon as they get it. I'll have a whole episode on the stupid passport bro wannabe sex later. But for now, let's head to the section you've all been waiting for and requested, the comment section from my last video. Again, this video dealt with pick me girls, what creates them in society, what that looks like, and how we can better support women so they don't feel the need to confine themselves in these boxes. And as a whole, the response was really positive. But per usual, there were some people in the comments who were just not having a normal one. And I will say that people that were, for some reason, upset by this video, they, they left a lot of comments. Like, they were heavily invested in this video, which was great for my algorithm. So I guess I don't mind, but just odd. First, nobody was hit harder by this video than Nunya Business, who pretty openly tells us that she's a pick me girl. She said, yeah, so the initial definition she gave pretty much summed up my friends and I. Okay, why are you telling on yourself? But the example wasn't even remotely close. Frankly, we'd walk away from those ones in half a second or so. And factually, I've never been mistreated in my life in work as I have from women. And I've been graped for comparison. I think, I think she meant groped. Said she's been mistreated by other women, but her and her friends are mean girls, pick me girls. So I, I don't know. That was hard to follow. But she was, she was very upset by this video. Here she is again in another comment thread on the same video saying, you're really off on this. I suggest expanding your real life social circle. I'm a married 17 years mom of three. I'm very successful in my life, yet you would call me a pick me, a cool girl and a liar. Stop it, do better. I would actually just call you triggered. Like this kind of comment on the video I thought was so odd because I felt like I dealt with the issue of pick me's with a lot of care. I said throughout the video that I think society has made women feel like they have to operate in this way to compete with other women and get male attention. And I feel sorry for them, but that they need support to come out of that mentality. If that upsets you, probably go talk to a therapist. I, I wondered this when I was reading the comments. Do people know that they can go tell a therapist things instead of writing them in YouTube comments? Because a lot of people would benefit from that. Next up, we have the creepiest comment thread on the video. I'm not even going to attempt to say this handle because honestly, who cares? He says, why is virginity creepy? I didn't mention virginity in this entire episode, for the record. He was called out for being a troll and a weirdo. And then he said, it's not trolling. My experience, women can't pair bond, there it is, or be faithful once used, which is basically 100% after 19. 
Either women virgins, all three, and ready to marry 18, 19, or they pursue bad men with vices. Anytime somebody says pair bond, run the other way, cross the street, get away. That person is a freak and a weirdo. Oh yeah, by the way, he started off by saying avoid used slash 19 plus year olds. Like how do I direct YouTube to let the police know to maybe search that guy's computer? Casker Bay said the comment section is not passing the vibe check. Proof right wingers can be just as snowflakey as the leftists. Oh boy, right wingers are more snowflakey than the leftists. I stand by that all day, every day. And the Pick Me Girl episode, I don't personally think should be controversial. <laughs> I'm gonna have some controversial things to say on this show. I'm pretty sure I said some controversial things this episode. But the Pick Me episode, why is this triggering to you, especially as a man? Because most of the people mad were men. Big homie Steve, who I actually had to block you guys because he left no less than like. 15 comments on my video and it was really starting to freak me out. It gave, it gave stalker vibes. He claimed to hate me and yet he spent a full day engaging with my video. It gives fan behavior to me. In one of his multiple comments he left, he said, you are correct. Not being anti-male is considered pick me. No, nope. That's nothing to do with being a pick me. I'm not anti-male. I like males. I like normal good males. I don't like online weirdos or red pill tinfoil hats, but I believe that's a minority of men still. I really do. I don't meet men like this offline. He said, Hannah is definitely a hardcore feminist based on my interaction with her. Uh, I am a hardcore feminist. I believe in the equality of the sexes, which is what feminism is. I'm not a third way feminism. I don't wear a pussy hat. I think gender is real. I have always been attracted to and like men. But like, this is what's so interesting to me is that they think in saying that you're a feminist is some kind of a put down on the far right. That it's gonna like really undermine you or like be a low blow. Like we've added her as a feminist. Like if that's a, like if that's a put down for your movement, you're probably going to have a hard time attracting women to it. And guess what, buddy? Women are 50% of this country. Like y'all just stay losing. Here's another red pill fantasy. He said, take away modern infrastructure and conveniences and a police force. And all of these modern American women would change their tunes real effing quick. Change what tune? Like women did just fine during World War II when all the men were off fighting and you had the whole Rosie the Ripper movement. Pretty sure they picked up factory work real freaking quick. Secondarily, the fact that he thinks police are actually protecting us is just... Here's another one from Big Homie Steve. He was very upset about the potential for comment section on this show. <laughs> for good reason, because he left like 50 weird ones. Wow, so now you're going to start publicly shaming men in the comments who disagree with your anti-male bias? That's messed up, Hannah, but I'm honestly not surprised at this point. And then we have this last one, which I think actually probably hits the target for why men were upset by my video. Twin Turbo said it would actually be refreshing to meet a pick me girl nowadays. Most women today can't even find energy to put a smile on their face. Like, you know, those men who scream at you in the street, smile. He, there he is online. He's one of those guys. Like they're really mad about me calling out the pick me because they are desperate for girls to suck up to them and be at their beck and call and try to please them. And the truth is normal, healthy women don't do that. They show up as full individuals looking for you to do the same, which I understand is outside of the reach for some of these men. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts this week. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give me a like and a comment. Share the episode if you thought it was interesting. I appreciate all of it, and I'll see you next week. If you like this episode, I'm sure you'll like others in my series, Histrionics, here, and you can catch my weekly show, The Base Politics Podcast, here.